here we are again nice another maintenance day it's uh raining outside it's been raining all morning all night i guess so which is fine got a little work to do to the machines and yeah i got the 500 hour service on the loader so that's engine oil filter air outer air filter fuel filter hydraulic tank filter and the pilot line filter for the like kind of the controls and stuff so we'll go over all that and i'll go a little more in depth in that uh i've also got new cylinders to go on the door of this they seem like they last a few months and then they kind of start wearing out but yeah that's that's them right there it makes a big difference on that door rattling and uh raising it and then also my little box of goodies Hydraulic. I think said it somewhere where it's not going to get as dirty. Fuel pilot. And then it's a whole box of pins and bushings. There's a thousand dollars right there in that box. So. But I did the new pins and bushings and the arms right here, but those are all now for all the rest of them so the two and the curl in the dump cylinder and then that's the inside you just take this bolt out and then drive them out there but that should be the rest of the pins for all of it the two in this cylinder and the arms i'm getting a lot of play and slop a lot of side to side and then you can tell when you're kind of trying to cut the bucket moves a little bit almost 6800 hours on it digging in the rocks that's a lot of wear and tear it's held up great but and I probably won't do those today. That's going to be a probably an all-day ordeal. I'm kind of getting a late start, and i got to go look at some jobs later if it quits raining. But we'll get the service and stuff done now, but I'm hoping in the next week or so to get all these pins and bushings in because i got some jobs coming up where i got to do a lot more cutting and grating. And then I make them over here to my little corner and kind of go through... I don't know if I even need half this crap over here, but I try to kind of get all my stuff. Uh, I got this is the shelf for the 250, and then the excavator, and then all my oils and different things. And I may even break down and see if I can't uh, put the new throttle on the excavator. I still got the vice grips on there; they're still working good, but that may be something else good to do today. I got the loader fired up, kind of warmed up pulled up here where I can uh, I think flip the cab up and not be in the way of anything so we'll just get a quick video of that but uh, my little oops for the morning I bought new cylinders to go on the door for when you, you pull the door up it's got these two cylinders and I'll show you I'll do a video of putting these on but uh, I don't know what I was <laughs> thinking but uh, I got here Moving stuff around, laid it there, started the machine up, I got a phone call, forgot about it, and uh, pulled the machine forward. So this one rolled off to the side, but this one got smushed, and it's, it's now bent, so that's... Yeah, so there's my little $70, and it kind of smashed that up and uh, marked it up pretty good. So, yeah, there's my uh, my oops for the morning. So, so I guess that's my word to the wise is don't set anything on the tracks on these. Especially if you want to keep it or use it. Shovels, whatever it is, I've ran over them all. You get in a hurry, you prop it up against the side of there, you jump back in it and go. So yeah, just make sure, especially if it's something you want to put on the machine and you just spent, you got to buy them as a pair. So yeah, it's 100, 135 bucks. It lasts about three months, it seems like. So this one made it zero months. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get the cab flipped up and uh, see what else we can tear up. And I can't remember, I may have put this in my last video, but, and it's too dark. Two bolts here and two bolts here and then this cab just flips up and then there's a safety pin in the back that you put so 
we'll uh, flip the cab up and And speaking of cylinders, this is machine's got four big cylinders that uh, lift this cab up. You can kind of see this residue here. These are shot. And this cab is heavy. So I may be running back down to Victor Phillips to get four more cylinders today because that'll... You can hardly pick this cab up quite by yourself if those are shot. This is why every now and then throughout the year, you want to take off these plates on the bottom because this is just dirt and dust and stuff that's been built up. Which I normally, I think I take all these off there on my thousand hour service, but this year was extremely dry on the summer, so this dust just gets in there and uh, yeah, just starts piling up. Then when you change the oil, it gets on there. I got the pilot line filter changed. Uh, camera died on me. I didn't have a battery with me when I started doing that, but fuel filter, oil filter, pilot line filter, everything underneath the cab is all changed and ready to go. Like I said, now I just need to get power washing and cleaning. This is what that filter looks like inside that canister. And you change these every 500 hours, but it goes... Uh, I guess the hydraulic fluid goes in there and it filters through there before it goes to the controls, I think. But that's what they call the pilot line filter. It's just another like secondary filter that runs through because these controls on this particular machine true pilot controls so there's no hesitation or anything like that that you may get with some of the electronic controlled uh, pilot controls which is nice it just that seems like well you know kind of why I can really fine-tune a lot of the stuff I'm doing is they're just real responsive and uh, no hesitation or anything like that I know when they went to the TL12s, I believe. They switched over and went to the electronic over hydraulic controls, but these are just 100% hydraulic. Got to change the hydraulic tank filter, and uh, I've got another outer filter, but I'm waiting on an inner air filter because this one's got 500 hours on it. It's seen better days. You can tell it's extremely dirty, but uh, they say you're only supposed to, you just have to change them every thousand hours. But as dry as it was earlier this summer and dusty, that was pretty dirty. So I'd feel better just putting a new inner and outer. But uh, yeah, we'll wait on that to get here and I'll go ahead and take this off and show you guys where the, the hydraulic filter is inside this tank over here. And you change it out every 500 hours, and it's just this steel or metal filter. I'm sure it's got, you know, yeah, you can kind of see like the, the material in there, but it's just this honeycomb looking filter that goes in the tank, and we'll change that out. And I know this is kind of a you know, somewhat choppy video, or but I. Uh, I'm not showing everything because I've already made one video kind of doing the 250 hour service, I believe. So I may throw that up on the end of this video where people that haven't seen it can link back to that. But I didn't feel there's any need changing, you know, showing changing the engine oil and the, oh, the oil filter and stuff like that again. I'm just kind of showing some of the things that I did a little differently this go around and uh, we'll go from there. Here you got to take this cover off. So you got two 13 millimeter bolts and then this is 17 millimeters you got to reach right inside there then you can just pop this up and spin it around
And this lid has got a spring underneath it, kind of. I guess it basically just holds that filter from bouncing around. It just sits down in this uh, tank or the area that it's at. Clean off the edges. I always forget to do that with the dirt. the spring and then this piece kind of sits down inside the filter and I've never had an issue with this o-ring You never know. It comes with the filter, so I just change it anyways. Had any problems with it leaking, but it comes with a new one, so we will just put it in there. There's really no top or bottom to this, I don't believe. And there's like a little piece that pops up and uh, that sits down on. So yeah, now we just put all that back together and we're good to go. And that's that on the hydraulic tank filter. What we got here is now we can get, which I'll have to clean all this trash out, but there's two cotter pins there and two of them up underneath here. Pop those out and put the new ones on. Okay, we'll start. Well, with the new one, I guess. They're not terrible, but. Okay, that was, uh. Nope. That, uh, pretty much wraps that up. I ended up having Brant show up and. Uh, what we had to do, we took the other side off and then I left the bottom of this one unfastened and the same thing over there, I hooked the bottoms of these up and then uh, he pushed back on the cab because once you get all these off it'll even go back further than what it normally does and then you can line these up so I pushed them both in there real quick ran around there and got that in, that may have been, I may have had help before, I think I said I've I think the last time I did this was like three years ago. <clears throat> so now I know I'll be good to go hopefully for a while. But uh, yeah, now we just got to drop the cab back down. Done with this. But uh, the big thing that came today is the quick coupler showed up. So now I'm all antsy to put this on the excavator. So I'm going to get this thing cab back down and get that greaser to put in. And... Uh, get this dude put on today. Now we're in the cab of the loader and I'm gonna replace the, I guess the cylinders or shocks, whatever they wanna call it on the door. Cause the door is kind of a, uh, they call it overhead or garage style door. But uh, it's just got these two gas shocks that go on here and kind of help, kind of help support the door and everything. But that's where, they start wearing out and you can see that's where some of the rattle comes into play because it's kind of got a 
a latch up here, which it's got some play. I need to figure out why there's a little bit of play in that roller, but like I said, it's a door that's got, you know, about 6,700 hours on opening and closing it a million times. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these replaced first thing so I don't take a chance of laying them somewhere running them over again but I'll get the camera set up and it's just two uh, 10 millimeter nuts that go in there there's little studs that stick out and uh, we'll get them replaced and go from there yeah, what I'm gonna do is just get the uh, window open just prop it up with my foot here because you need to be able to reach reach the sides you can always tell when these things are starting to go out because the oil inside of them starts leaking out which I found out last summer I got sick and tired of doing that so I uh, flipped them over the other way where the cylinder part was up here and they wore out even faster, and I guess from uh, talking to the mechanic at the dealership, he was thinking that the dust and junk was blowing in on there and setting right here where the cylinder was going back inside of there and pitting them out and wearing the seal. I didn't get all the oil and crap all over me, but it seemed like they were just weren't lasting near as long. It seems like these things only last a couple of months and. I don't know, I'd probably change them out more than what I really need to, but the way I look at it, I'm in this thing almost every day. It's easier to raise the door with them when they're working. And that's why I wear my head, I get tired of hearing them rattle. Watch this one's not. Eh, it's not terrible. I may keep that for like a spare, but it's a little looser than what it was. Yeah, because they're a little harder to push when they're new. Same thing for this side, and this part of it will be done. Okay, now we're going to change the gear oil and the final drives here. Uh, actually, the first thing we're going to do is clean the mud off, but this is something you just got to do every 500 hours. And there's three, I don't remember what size Allen head uh, plugs in here, but this will be the one to drain it and then. You fill it in this one until it comes out of this hole right here. So we'll get it all drained out and we'll scrape it all off first. Then we'll drain it out. What I've done is just take a, uh, I think it's a gallon or five quart container, cut the side of it out and it actually fits in there perfect. And it'll drain out and fill that up. We'll let that run out for a while. While it's doing that, I want to take off another one of the belly pans and finish cleaning the dirt out from underneath it. And then we'll come back and I just use just 80, 90 gear oil. And all I've done was just take a small one and uh, that way you can put that in there, fill it up, I said, until it comes out of there. And uh, that's all there is to that. I like out a little bit more in the Takahuchis than what Alex does from uh, Nickens lawn care on his bobcat. He made a video the other night. He was trying to change it and It looks like on his the T I think it's the T 180 that he's working on The fill and drain is back behind the sprocket. So you gotta take the track off and all that uh, And the sprocket and everything just to get to that where luckily this design is all outside here So you don't have to remove the track or anything so it's a pretty simple procedure. It almost takes longer for the stuff to drain out as thick as it is uh, than it does to actually change it. I really should have washed this thing before I started all this. But at the same time.
And yeah, it just kind of drains out. And I think it usually takes one and a half of these. This is a 32 ounce. And that's all there is to that. It's the uh, 500 hour service. Like I said, I know it was a little bit choppy, but I didn't really care to show the draining the oil and changing that filter and all that jazz. But yeah, I kind of showed the, or highlighted the parts that were different on the 500 hour. And then the 750 hour will be just the air filter engine oil. And then I'll definitely video the uh, 1000 hour it's everything you do with the five hour, 500 hour except you take the radiator out and flush that and then you also take the suction strainer out of the bottom of the, the hydraulic tank sorry and uh clean the tank out and clean the suction strainer make sure there's no debris or metal shavings or anything like that in there uh then you have to bleed the hydraulic system and then just kind of run through a cycle on uh uh, raising and lowering in the arms and stuff with the cylinders and curling and dumping the bucket Work any air or anything like that out and kind of get it going Call that good. Hope you guys have a good weekend and uh, catch you later